Well, I'm Dara O'Brien. Um, I'm a PhD student here under the supervision of Mel Mercier, doing um, a research degree in, in North Indian classical music. Um, I'm also a sitar player, and I teach two modules in the university. I do a practical module in sitar, performance, and I do a lecture series in North Indian classical music. The sitar module gives the students an opportunity to taste the rich and ancient tradition of um, North Indian classical music and to embody the tradition through, through the sitar. Um, students are introduced to the language of raga, the system of uh, North Indian classical music, which is a very sophisticated system. For many students, it might be their first time to improvise. So it's a, it's a real nice introduction. And also to um, the Indian notation system known as Sargam. Um, not only is the experience, I suppose, intrinsically valuable as a glimpse into another world, but it's also the kind of knowledge that is uh, transferable to other skills such as composition, um, other instruments and perhaps just a musician's creative process and their perspective on, or maybe even their perspective on what music actually is. Because music exists in, its, like, in a different space in India, you could say, um, where it, it has a different function to a certain extent. Um, you really kind of, in order to um, explore this music to its real depth, you have to go quite deep within. Um, and I think the students grasp that and they, they really give it a go. The sitar has evolved really as a hybrid of um, a Muslim instrument and um, the Hindu or the ancient Indian veena. Um, if you talk to an Indian musicologist, they may say that the sitar in its present form has actually existed for about 500 years. But recent um, research has actually kind of proved that it's only really existed in this form for about 150 years. Um, and it's still being modified. Into, you know, there's a few different variations. Um, the dif different strings in the sitar have different functions that relate to the aesthetic of the music. So you have your main melody string, and you have a drone string, which plays alongside the melody. Then you have chikari strings, which are like high rhythmic drone strings, which create a, a rhythmic drone. Then you have these sympathetic strings underneath. So all the different strings have a different function, which which kind of make this beautiful tapestry of sound, you know? The instrument itself is made out of a, this is a pumpkin. It's kind of a dried gourd. And then it's all hollow wood. And this is all mainly deer horn or camel bone, one of the two. It's actually an extremely difficult instrument to play. And one of the things the students realize that even the posture, even sitting in the posture, is um, quite a painful process for more than about 20 minutes, you know? Only after about 10 weeks can they actually sit like this for a full hour. So um, in that sense, they really are embodying the tradition, you know? <laughs> 